Hour 2 Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line of the final score. Brian Hayes, the O-Dog, Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. We've got Ray Ferraro coming up here in a moment. Leafs, Caps tonight, a bunch of big games in the NHL. Big, big games tonight. you got Winnipeg, Vegas tonight. L.A., Edmonton tonight, Dallas, Vancouver tonight. Like, the Canadian content is substantial this evening. Yes. Locked and loaded for yes. television tonight. Absolutely. Cannot wait. And we'll see if Matthews plays tonight. Uh, it sounds as if he likely will, but he d- was not a participant in the morning skate. And Joseph Wall will go tonight. Ovi's ready. The Caps are playing for something. So they're still jockeying for position, certainly in the East with Philly and Washington and Detroit and Tampa won last night, so they're only two points back of the Leafs. The Leafs have a game in hand on them, and they play each other two more times. Yeah. So we'll ask Ray about that. You know, if he thinks there is a preference, if maybe the Leafs are feeling one way or the other, Boston, Florida, New York, Carolina, could really shake out any which way. And I guess from that standpoint, that is unique. We did discuss yeah. it last hour. It kind of feels like a 1v8, 2v7 type era yeah. where you could go anywhere Crossover. and you could play any other team. Where that that is that is actually different because the last few years you've known like this time last year was like they're playing Tampa locked in the year before they're playing Tampa like yeah. it was just by January basically you knew that at least we're into late March the Jays are playing again and we still don't know who the Leafs are going to play in the first round yeah I think that's that it's is unique. different that's what's different that's what's unique about it you shouldn't hope for one or the other you just more worry about yourself but that's what I was talking about I think this is. Uncharted territory, because there is an, a chance. There's a there chance a they chance. play any combination of those four teams. Right. That's what it is. Which is great. Yeah. yeah. You're saying there's a chance. You're Mary saying Swanson. there's a chance. Mary Swanson. Yep. Yep. Um, as for, you know, the, the three Western Canadian teams playing, Calgary's playing St. Louis tonight, too. Calgary's so, kind of... <laughs> Calgary's kind well, of moving limping. in the direction of where the Raptors are at right now. Like, just get to the end, pack your bags. I think the U-Hauls are probably booked in Calgary. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty sure they're looking they have on plans. travel websites. Yeah, they're wondering: Are we going to Europe? Are we going to go to the Caribbean? Well, Vegas? What are we? We should do? do. We should do that Monday. Whose search history, and not anything goofy, but who's who's do we want to check out? Like mm-hmm. bubble teams. Who whose search history do we want to get under to think they really have a well, chance? Well, St. Louis needs that game tonight. Have to win it. I, I think they're out anyway, back. but they yeah. pretty much have to win it. Unless Vegas just completely stubs their toe. But my understanding in the East, it looks like 91, 92 will get you in. I don't know what it's going to look like in the West. The Blues I think had to get that in regulation against the Golden Knights last week or a couple of days ago. Whenever yeah. They had to get that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd love to be able to go back and look at the Nashville Predators search history from about a month and a half ago. That would be interesting. That's the one. Games without the eight. What are they? Sixteen zero oh, and two. Sixteen zero oh, and two. So nineteen games ago, was anyone on there saying Italy's beautiful in April? Yeah, like oh, really, yeah. really nice. You haul like you prepaid <laughs> yeah. for it because you got twenty five percent off or whatever. Right. But we got now, invited to a wedding on April twentieth. Yeah. Say we'll be there. <laughs> Brazzers, <laughs> Travago, loaded. <laughs> <laughs> and now all of a sudden you're going back. You're like. Yeah, geez. I guess we're going deposit. to the playoffs. Yeah, I'm losing my deposit. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're going to the playoffs. And you can't go. I, I, I've told you this before. The coach of the year has already been submitted. Which is so ridiculous to me. Dude, that's the Andrew dumbest Burnett, thing. Like, if they win every game the rest of the way, which is possible at this point, they go 26-0-2 down the stretch. And Bruno, Why would you and, and submit a vote for, for coach three. of the year with 10 to 12 games left? I don't oh, know. That is insane. That's crazy. That's why you and I don't have a vote, because we have integrity. We don't want to be a part of that. Here's Ray Ferraro, our ESPN hockey analyst, joining us on the Maple Toyota Hotline. How about your boy Bruno down in Nashville? See, I tell you, you know, that there's a lot of things learned in Atlanta. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> None of it was how to win. Right. But uh, uh, really, really happy for him. Like, he's honestly, he's for the people that have never come across him, he's, he's one of the great guys in the game. Like, there is, there is nobody that can... Like when he laughs, the entire room laughs. Like he's got this big personality, but he always hid in kind of self-deprecating humor about he wasn't a very fast skate. Well, actually, he was really slow. He didn't have a very good shot. He had a terrible shot. He started like at age 27, he made the NHL and he played a thousand games. Like he's super smart. He really, really gets it and he gets people. 
And so, like, this run is crazy, ridiculous, right? Like, like that, oh, yeah. that just – it just doesn't – really happened that way. I laughed when you guys were talking about the deposit. I had a teammate in Hartford. This was back in the days of travel agencies. And my dad was coming out for the last, I don't know, 10 games of the year or something or other. So I go in the travel agency to book his ticket. And I see one of our guys, I see their name (laughs) on a folder. So the lady goes back to do whatever. I turn the thing around. It's one of our defensemen. He's got a trip booked for Disney right after the season. We're like eight <laughs> points out of the playoffs. Well, so I'm like giggling away, right? We end up making the playoffs. So as we're practicing, I, I go up to him, I go, what'd you do with your trip to Disney? He looked at me like with like four eyes. That's He's like, dirty. are you kidding me? Right. Before we get into what's going on right now, you just mentioned Atlanta. Like when you hear their name popping up as a possible destination for the team a third time, what goes through your head? Because I look at I would, it and I'm like, that's insane. Oh, I, my first thing, I laugh because I just think of how bad we were the first couple of years. And then I think anyone associated with that team should not be hired mm-hmm. with the new group. That's, like the crazy part is, you know, Carolina's had a terrific team for what, you know, seven, eight years. And when Ron Francis left, the GM's Don Waddell, who – we have had more laughs over the years about our, our team, but he was the GM there. Yeah. Like it was a, it was a debacle from the, the, I think that, I think they got in the expansion draft, like the 12th best skater off of every team. Like <laughs> it's ridiculous, right? But why but go what, back Ray? Like what, what, what's going to change where there's just going to be, I know noodles has talked about the growth in the city and everyone said money. that about Atlanta for 30 years. It's the fastest growing city in the USA. It's like, it, it's not really Atlanta though. It's, it's well outside of Atlanta. It's where all the money is. It's a, um, a dedicated owner. Uh, it was explained to me when they went through the budget meetings in, in Atlanta. They said, okay, because Turner owned the team. And they said, okay, here's the budget for the baseball. And here's the budget for the basketball. And these crumbs over here are for the hockey team. Mm. Like they, there was nothing. There was, so it's been mismanaged twice, misownershiped twice. So I, I guess they look at it and go, there's an owner, like, what makes Salt Lake a good market? There's a guy with, like, buckets of money that says, yeah, I'll build the rink, I've got the money for the team, and this is going to, and I'll make it work. It's everything that hasn't gone well in Phoenix for 25 years. They've got, in two spots, apparently, guys that can fund this thing. And let's face it, if you, if you can't fund it, you can't, you can't even get out of the starting gate. Yeah, that yeah. is mandatory, yeah, and you need the money. You need it for a long time. And also, you know, you referenced the, the 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 way the expansion worked back in the day. That has drastically changed. When you look at Vegas right. and Seattle, is I think the league finally figured this out at the expense of Atlanta and Minnesota and Columbus, Columbus and other yeah. teams. Right. You've got to give them a chance out of the gate. You got to give them a chance to be competitive. Great. You know, you well, have to I, do it. I'm, wouldn't that be a great sales pitch here? Why don't you give us almost a billion dollars and we're going to kick you in the left one right. on the way out the door. It'd be awful right? for years. Yeah, don't worry. It'll be fine. In year 14, you guys are going to be great. <laughs> they yeah. did it right. I mean, Vegas, They figured it out. They really six did. Six years yeah. in, Vegas wins a cup, yeah. which is still unheard of. Cup unheard final of. their first year. Cup no. final their first year, <laughs> which it really is absurd. But... You know, and Seattle's kind of gone up and down, but they made the playoffs last year. In year yep. two of their existence, they made the playoffs and were a good team. Sure. They've got some good pieces there, yep. clearly. Um, you know, up here, obviously, we're waiting to see if Matthews will even play tonight. It's a game-time decision. But with the Leafs, it's interesting what's going on because Tampa's red hot. They're only two points back now, Ray, with two games to go against each other. The Leafs are playing Tampa in Tampa, and Tampa comes up here one more time. So there's a real chance for fluctuation here. You know the Leafs are going to start on the road. Tampa's going to start on the road. We just don't know who they're going to play. I'm sure you've had these conversations. Like, would it be ideal if they played Florida, Boston, if they cross over and play New York, Carolina? Do you have a sense of maybe what would be in the best interest of the Maple Leafs? You, you know, it, uh, I don't. And the reason I say is, like, I've seen quite a bit of those teams. And I, I think the team I would fear the most in a seven-game ser- seven series is Florida. And because I think they're big, 
and mean, and they like that sort of grindy, messy game. But Carolina, the Rangers, Boston, um, they're, they're kind of all the same to me. Like, they're, they're, a little di- they're each a little different, but they're all really, really good teams. Like, they're, they're all deep. They can all score. They don't give up a lot. Like, they're, they're built like, a, like playoff teams. And, I, you know, I did the Rangers game last Saturday, and, you know, they've had, a, you know, they've had a pretty good run here. But Panarin has gone to a, a different spot, like a different level, I think. And for the times that he gets a little quiet, maybe in the playoffs where, he, you know, he defers and doesn't look for his shot, I don't, I don't see that this year. I see a player more like Pasternak, who looks for a shot, who works really hard to get the puck back, which maybe he didn't quite have in his arsenal before. I think the Rangers are really good. I, I keep waiting for Boston to flatten out. Like I, I, I don't know why I'm waiting. It's eight, 70 games in. Like they're, I keep waiting for them to not be as good as they are. But they're they're good. Carolina, I wouldn't want to play them. Like they they just they like to you wind them up at the start of the game and they go a hundred miles an hour for sixty minutes and then they go home and do it the next day. Like they they would be a hard team. I don't I don't see a preferential matchup for Toronto. I really don't. Like I don't I don't see one for anybody. Like right. we're all trying to figure out who's going to play who, and I'm like. There, there's going to be really good teams that get kicked in the ass in the first round this year. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah. is. It's, it's true, Ray. Right? What ass. do you make of, you know, the four Canadian teams that are going to the playoffs? I mean, Vancouver, Edmonton, Winnipeg, Toronto. You know, it's 25% of the, of the, the league. You know, do, do you, can you make a pathway or make an argument for all four to have success in the playoffs? Well... Yeah, I mean, well, success is what success like win around. Well, I because, hope more than that. I would, I would hope to, to me. There's well, Vancouver, Vancouver, and Edmonton are somebody's going to win one round, right? Like if, if if they both get out of the first round, then mm-hmm. oops, then somebody goes home, right? Like it's um, I, I'm interested because um, in the way that the teams are winning, like we know what Edmonton has got, and. Yet they win a bunch of three two and three one games. When they have to win six five, well, they can do that probably as good as anybody. But they're, they've become a much more patient, grindy sort of team. I think that serves them well. Vancouver had a great offensive start. Now I think they're, I think they're the best team in the league at five on five, and that's where most of the game gets played. I'm like, man, they, they. I've been doing their games. I got they play Dallas tonight. Every game they play is two one or three two, mm-hmm. like playoff style. Winnipeg is really good, and really you know as good a goalie as anybody. So they'll be tough. And then I, I didn't realize the Leafs' record since like you know it's like sixteen and nine, and it's been pretty pretty good for a couple of months. I didn't realize they had done it quite so stingy with kind of a defense that I don't really love. And the goalie position's been all up in the air, but why can't they? Why can't each of these teams win a round, get into the second round, get into a place where if your goalie gets hot for ten days, you win the second round? Of course they can, because the other teams are all hoping for the same thing. Ray, right? Who like would you put in that like, for the first game in the playoffs for the uh, Leafs? Samson off, Samson off for me. Ooh, that was quick. Yeah, That's two I just, in a row. I, I just, I just. I, I just would I, – I, I like the way that he's played since he's come back. Um, I like Wall, but I, I just – I think I got you can only put one, and I would, I would put – for me today, it would be Samsonoff. Like my uh, coach of the year vote, there's still 10 days left. I don't have to vote, by the way. <laughs> but I would probably – but if I'm picking today, it would be Samsonoff. Yeah, yeah, you it's, guys, you guys different. Like you guys think. I, I don't. I don't think I have an answer on it. I think that speaks to where they're at right now. Right? Is yeah. I probably yeah. would go with Samson up based on he's been better the last three weeks to a month. But I feel like that could flip within the next forty eight hours. I'll and, put in Hayes, who's ever playing good and is healthy. Uh, exactly. Like, it, give me a yeah. stretch of solid play. That's kind of what's hanging over the team right now, Ray. Is 
they've been winning games and everything's all good. Yet, you know, Marner's hurt. Yarn Krog's hurt. Matthews might be out tonight due to illness. Labush can miss games. Edmondson's out. Riley's out. Like, there's a lot of moving parts. Like, it's really difficult to, to lock down what the four lines, the three deep pairings, and the starting goalie are going to be right now. Like, it's really yeah. undetermined. And we're three weeks away from game one. I did a game late last year in Vegas. They were playing Edmonton, and Jonathan Quick was the goalie. And before the game, we said to Bruce Cassidy, um, uh, who's in goal for you? He goes, uh, it's going to be Quickie tonight. Uh, we go, who's the backup? And he goes, whichever two guys are sitting in there upright are my favorite goalies. <laughs> they were, they had the same thing. Like they had, if you remember, I think Brassois started the playoffs, didn't he, he did. Jamie? And then he got hurt yeah. in Edmonton and Aiden Hill came in and didn't look back. Right. So like the, their plan was that. But at one point, like with two weeks left in the season, it was Jonathan Quick. Like they, they, didn't, they didn't have anything. They, they had nothing to hang their hat on. And so I guess the, I guess the best way forward is that you, know, you just kind of put your head down and your lineup's probably going to change however it's going to change. It always seems good or bad to solidify in those last couple of games. And, you know, you're, you kind of figure out who you're going to have and who you're not going to have. And then you just, you just play. Like, I'm, I'm sure they've got – in. I'd always love to see these coaches whiteboards in their office. Like they must have 10 different lineup combinations. Like, like I'm doing, like I said, I'm doing the game tonight in Vancouver and Dakota Joshua is coming back. Um, you know, he had to broke his hand in a fight uh, um, six weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Who would have thought they would have missed Dakota Joshua as right. much as they did. He was a healthy scratch at the start of the year in, in the first day of training camp. By the time it got to, he was, you know, he was with the NHL guys. By the third day, he was in the C group. Like that, that's the guys that don't have a chance. And now he's, they're so excited that he's coming back. Like so much can change really quickly. And the guy you might need might be someone you don't even really give much thought to right now. Yeah. Vancouver's, you know, they've been, they've had the most unique run, I would say, of the top teams in each respective division because, Edmonton has come on, obviously, the last three or four months, but they're still eight points back. Edmonton's got a couple games in hand, but it's very likely Vancouver's just going to cruise to home ice within their part of the bracket. Yet Dallas and Colorado, Winnipeg are fighting it out. Rangers, Carolina have been fighting it out. Boston, Florida have been fighting it out. And I'm curious, you know, how the market feels about that, how Rick Tockett's kind of handling it, this idea that Vancouver's just been so consistent since night one. And you know, are very comfortable with the idea that they're going to have home ice, certainly in the first round. But I would imagine it's a priority to try to get home ice throughout the West. Uh, is that kind well, of a talking point every day? You know what? You, you mentioned how talk it's handled it. He talks about these same things every day. He talks about commitment. He talks about board battles. He talks about being more firm in front of the Canucks net and the other net. Like he never deviates from his message. It's going to be hard. It's going to get harder. We got to learn to be uncomfortable. We got to learn to take a punch in the mouth. It's like they don't talk about anything else. And it's in my mind, it's a really good way of messaging, whether that's what they're thinking about. I got no idea, but I think it's a good way to message because you don't get tied up in, you know, what if you don't get home ice advantage? What if you win and then you've got to play Colorado and I don't know, Colorado's lost one game at home in three months or something like that. Like, who wants to play Colorado? Like, nobody. So they just kind of chug along. I think what's happened, though, if, is at the start of the year, they scored so many goals. Now they've become uh, like a big, physical, kind of defensive-minded team. They don't give up any goals. And they're doing it right now without what I think is one of the best probably three or four goalies in the league this year. And that's Demko who's out. Um, Like the other night they lost to LA. There were two goals that went in off somebody's foot. They gave up 19 shots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, you know, you're going to win most of those games. I mean, the whole game, if you know, you're, you're drinking coffee halfway through the second period because you want to stay awake. You know, the Kings have thrown a wet blanket over all of it. Mm -hmm. And they just like, they just chug, kind of Vancouver just kind of chugs along like a, you know, a slow moving thing. And 
they're aggressive and they're big and could they win? I, I don't I don't know if they're deep enough. Like their big acquisition, Lindholm, he's he's not playing again tonight. He's got some kind of injury and he's just not playing. So they've you know, they're they're a little short shorter than they thought they'd be. Ray, what do you make of you of talk's effort all season long? You talked about Bruno. Like for me, if I was voting, we we had a vote the other day. Talk it was number one, I believe, on your list. Hayes was it not? Yeah, across the board. I don't know. I no, o, did not have. Oh, had him. At yeah, one. but I had Paul Maurice. Surprising. Yes, Paul Maurice. Shocker. Yeah. Shocker. Yeah. <laughs> but because yeah, oh, I'm going to debate you there because you know, like, because Paul had such a lousy team coming into the year, you know, because they <laughs> they only got to the finals last year, um, but. Um, no, I was a front yeah. runner. He always has. <laughs> yeah, uh, excuse me. Can I the interrupt here? They yeah, went to ahead. the finals last year. Most teams think the join out that just kind of pop up in the finals. They stumbled a bit off the start. And now I think they're the team to beat. That would warrant the coach of the year for me. Sorry if okay. you guys disagree. All right. Reasonable. I, 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 I agree with you, Oh, that they were banged up at the start of the year. But I, don't, I, I think Paul's – Paul's one of a bunch of guys, I think, that's done – I think he's a great coach. I really do. But I, I think the coach is somebody that's t- – coach of the year, somebody that's done something unexpected. Um, that, to me, is – like, this would be the year I would think about John Cooper because I'm, I'm like, mm. that team is – look at it now compared to even two years ago. It's nothing the same. It's, it's nothing. If I, if I were going to vote, though, I, I would vote for Tockett. At the start of the year, they said, Jim Rutherford said, we can make the playoffs if everything goes perfect. Like, that's a pretty small margin. That's kind of like Blue Jay-ish. Yeah, it is. We think, yeah. Right? Like, that's, yep. that's what he said. And, and now they're, you know, they're in first place. And I, I think he would, like, to your question, Jamie, I, I, I think that's who I would vote for. I I think he's going to win it. It feels like he he is going to win it. He probably, I think he should win it. We all see it the same way. Oh, had him seventh or eighth on his list, I think. And that's fine. Did he beat you up at one point? (laughs) Yeah, Tockett used to. Dude, I had him at two. I had him at at three. I had Montgomery at two, which is reasonable, too. I just saw your list. Go from the bridge, just put your list up. You just put your list up. You don't even know your list. That's why you're not a voter. You don't know your own list. Jimmy Montz came in too. Yeah, Monty, you had, you had boy Monty at two. But, well, Ray, you got to admit Monty deserves some love. What a <laughs> yeah, season! Yeah. <laughs> what a Monty's season been down good. There. Monty's been good in Boston. You know what is really funny about this? I hate when we put our ballots in for the awards, and then the awards come out, and you go on some radio show, and they say, "Who did you have on your Norris ballot?" Yeah. and I'm like. I have no idea. Like, what, <laughs> I, I got to write it and copy it on a list because I'm like, once I'm finished voting, it's like out of my brain. Mm-hmm. And just like what you guys did, like you thought, oh, had him seventh. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe you didn't and you were just busting Yeah, him out yeah I kind of knew he was somewhere in the top <laughs> yeah. five, but I can't, can't let him off the hook. I'm competing against him. Yeah, this we week. got a huge, huge one coming up. The Hart Trophy voting today, Ray. Yeah. Like everyone's got to take on that. I mean, are you are you McKinnon? It feels like McKinnon's a pretty heavy favorite to win the hard. Uh, I, I I would vote for Kucherov. Yeah, he's he, he deserves because, a ton of love, man. Look at look at the difference in points between Kucherov and Braden Point, and McKinnon and who he gets to play with. Like I I just I think there's if McKinnon was hurt for two months, I think Colorado could kind of, sort of, steady the ship a little bit to make it through. If Kucherov's out for two months, I think Tampa's dead. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's, I don't know if that's any criteria for the award, but that's, that's how I have it in my head. Oh, I think that makes a lot of sense. Tampa's, I mean, he's... Yeah, they're getting a little bit more healthy. They're too. starting Jeno to get there. Like, played last night. Who's that? Tanner Janot. Do you see that fight? Him no, and Frederick? I, oh, I didn't see that Ooh. until, no. Like, Tampa's yeah. beaten some good teams. They're, they beat yeah. Florida last week. They beat Boston last night. Yeah, Watch out. Vasilevsky's coming alive. Oh, I think yeah. they're like 1-8, one 1-1 and, one and one in the last 10 or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. Are they still – where are you at with Tampa? Beautiful. I think they're I, – I don't think they're as good as the other teams. Like, the, they don't, they're not as deep, but they're different. They're bigger. They're – they, it's just a really slower, grindy sort of game, and they got the big boy in that, and he looks really, really terrific. Like Janelle is Janelle's back, and he's like 
He's important for them. Is he a world beater? No. Although, don't ask Trent Frederick, because no to, to steal Noodle's line, he came third in that fight. <laughs> and, like, oh, poor guy. Man. I'm watching it now. It was like McCabe and Charles. He's holding on for dear life. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing, guys. On. Kansas City Chiefs won a Super Bowl this year, and everybody thought that this is the worst team that won the Super Bowl. So maybe Tampa just picks one off with a team you never thought. Who knows? Yeah. Possible. Uh, like they're, they're, they will never be... The, the the core of their team is so good that as long as those guys are still at the level they are, they'll never be easy. They'll never yeah. be an easy out. No. Like, you know, Stamkos had, you know, scored his 30th. They took it away on one of those ridiculous offside reviews. I, I don't know if you guys saw that. It was, I don't even know. If, I don't even know what the rule is anymore, but so he's at 30, Kucherov's at 120 points, points really great. Yeah. You know, Hedman still, most of Victor Hedman, Vasilevsky is still one of one of the best or the best. So I, I don't think they'll ever be an easy OG oh, Tampa doesn't have it anymore. As long as those guys are there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Points got forty plus, like 42, Kucherov forty. Yeah. You know, that and those they're, they're gamers too. They elevate. Yeah. Like you know yeah. that what come playoff time, those guys will be even better. Well, Hedman Sorelli will really be there. Good. Like they've, they've got the, the big loss is the defenseman, yeah. Thurgachev. Like Thurgachev, that was yeah. yeah. And even McDonough's still got some life in him too, man. Like McDonough, he's not there anymore, obviously. But right. like what's going on with him? Yeah, they could use him. Well, right now. exactly. Well, they they really they really could. Oh, by the way, he's with the team that's sixteen zero and two. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Like it. It's. I don't know if you guys have watched Nashville, but they've got. Half a dozen guys, you have no idea who they are. And yeah. they're all the same. They're like mm-hmm. fast and skill and like they just, and they go, 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 go. Like it's, it's really a fun team to watch. It really is. Well, they're going, man. And I, I mean, I think there's a lot of teams in the West saying, really, we got to punch that ticket. Like I was talking to someone earlier, they ki- it's kind of like the Blues in 19. Like, yeah. you know, Yossi is Petrangelo and Soros yeah. is Bennington. And then they just got, like, O'Reilly's bunch there. Bunch of good players. Bunch yeah. of good players, not superstars, but just, like, Brunette is playing the role of Barubi. And it's like, I wouldn't want to play them. Like, why would, yeah. imagine you, you, imagine they get in and it's like, Vancouver might get them. Vancouver's had this unbelievable year. They might have Nashville right. in the first round. No yeah. thanks. Well, well, what about, I mean, I guess there's no greater example of how crazy this all is, is, then last year, is, you know, we we spent seven months talking about Jim Montgomery and the Bruins and yep. historic season, and in twelve days they went home. Yeah. You know, thanks for coming. Yep. It's it, it it's a uh, that that first round. I I don't care. Like I don't care about what other sports look like. I don't think there's anything more fascinating or fun to watch than the first round, because yeah. it's it's wild and the games come so fast and. Good teams go home, and you're like, man, it's a, it's a hell of a round. And just to get in is one thing. And what if a team like Toronto, who most people have said, ah, oh, yeah, they don't quite have it this year. What if this is the year that it comes together for them? Like, right. really comes together. Like, why can't it? It's not like they're way worse than everybody else. That's mm-hmm. not the case. Mm-hmm. That's what they're banking like, on. Get a couple breaks, yeah. get a goalie that gets hot, and... Yeah, why exactly? Like it's we Florida by the end of it you look back and said, "Oh, I really like that team." This time right. last year, I think most people would have put money they were going to miss the playoffs. You know, it Well, was, they they were they were riding Alex Lyon. Right. Yeah. Exactly. They, like that like it's it all when you look at it, none of it makes any sense. No. But why can't somebody get like it I think it's so changed in that you needed a Marty Brodeur before. You don't anymore. Like Vegas just showed us last year. Well, Florida showed us last year. Like maybe Toronto starts with Samson off, and then it's Wall, and then they go back to Samson. Like who knows? It 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 makes the stakes pretty high for the decision makers for sure. It sure does. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a fun few weeks. Uh, I'm sure we'll catch up before the playoffs. Thank you for doing this, buddy. We always appreciate it. Have a good call tonight, and uh, we'll do it again soon. Yep. Be well, guys, and um, we'll look forward to the next time we chat. You got See it. Ya. There's uh, our buddy Ray Ferraro joining us here on the Maple Toyota Hotline. Check out Maple Toyota's huge truck and SUV lineup, including Tundra, Forerunner, Highlander, and Grand Highlander in stock and ready to deliver. Visit mapletoyota.com. Yeah, there's going to be, like, that first round is is bedlam. It is truly bedlam. 
And I love mm-hmm. it. It will be. I cannot wait for it because I think most people are looking at Washington, Detroit, Philly, like whoever gets in, yeah. whoever the two teams, like circle them. I don't think they can win, but they could. Right. But they're clearly further down the list. Everyone else, now that Nashville's doing what they're doing, LA's back to doing what they're doing. Yeah. Everyone in the West could win a round. Yeah. Six of the eight teams in the East could win a round, maybe all eight. And, and yeah, we could be we could be six weeks away from all hell eight versus. teams being left that you're like, I didn't see this coming yeah. at any point. Guys, we've been talking about goalies all year long. It is going to be who can be the guy that gets it done for you. Yep. There's going to be more emphasis on it more than ever. It's yeah. I, Like Noodle says, he's shocked that they don't make as much as the other guys because it's a goalie league. <laughs> Yeah, and you get mad when guys are like I can't believe they gave him five million dollars. Of like, mm-hmm. there's left wingers that on the third line yeah. that make five million that don't do anything. Literally getting healthy scratched at yeah. times. You yeah. know, we got to take them out of the line at healthy. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, the goalie's just haggling for some just cash, grinding <laughs> away. <laughs> Yet the unpredictability of it all kind of speaks to that too, in a weird way, because of what we're talking. There's a number of teams that are like, I don't know who's playing. Yeah. You know, like if the Leafs, if there was a playoff budget and they had to pay a goalie right now, I don't know who they'd give the money to. And they'd feel uncomfortable giving the money to one over the other because I don't think they even have a clue right now who's actually going to get hot and who's going to play for them. Well, it's got to be somebody that they, you know, I I, I would say today at Samsonov, yep. but all of a sudden Joseph Wall throws up a great game tonight and gets on a roll. You're like, okay, he's your guy. Because mm-hmm. both are capable because neither one of them are clear-cut ones right now at this stage of their career. So yeah. you're having to bank on one of them we need playing at the top of their capabilities at the right time. Yep, absolutely. Pierre LeBron still to come. Dear Hazy, be on a Thursday. We love it because it's, it's a short week, right? It is mailing in Friday here, so, or mailing in Thursday. I guess I should get that right. So Pierre's coming up. Dear Hazy, be coming up. Our heart lists are coming up. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. All right, Mail It In Thursdays brought to you by Boston Pizza, Canada's favorite sports bar from tip-offs to tie bites and puck drops to Pizza BP's elite lineup of apps, wings, and ice-cold beers always dialed in for game time. Hustle into your local BP tonight. Just got a message here from our friend Ryan Bolta, who's over there in the offices, I guess, yeah. you know, over in the annex. And I, had a, I, I heard a crazy discussion when I was over there earlier today. They get into some weird stuff. Oh, yeah. They get into some wild stuff. The dumbest the sports debates of all time. Yeah. I mean, I, I there was one gentleman. I won't out him because I did that one time. Remember we did the Dear Hazy B and there was a yeah. guy. And he I don't think he was. Pissed. Yeah. So I'm not going to name names. But is an esteemed colleague of ours. Joe from the bridge. No, it is not Joe from the bridge. But very Joe from the bridge E or okay. esque. So scarred as a sports fan. Yeah. He's a Leaf fan, a Blue Jay fan, and a 49er fan. He said he cannot watch games live. He waits to see if the team won the game. Then he will go back and watch it. If they that's lost, insanity, he deletes dude. it and does not watch it. That's insanity. Well, that's, that's not being a, a That's fan. a level that's of crazy. That's unhealthy. That's, that's really unhealthy. unhealthy. That's what I said. I'm like, you're in like stages of like recovery of as, as a sports fan, basically. Yeah. Like you, you are in a really dark place. If you you're like the Leafs are playing tonight, he's like I I won't watch. If they win, I'll go and watch because he PVRs every game. But if they lose, he'll just delete it as if it didn't exist. That's like that's weird, a really that's wild not, way to live. How man. do you yeah? How do you live as a fan then? Like I, I don't know. It's just weird. So <laughs> your 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 existence on is on if the the team wins. Well, I guess I mean, but if they lose, you're pissed off. But you didn't subject yourself to it. That's his thought. You know, his mentality. I think he's a big Leaf fan. I got the impression up 4-1 with 11 minutes to go. Sent him Broke in a soul. really bad place. Broke his soul. And he's a Niner fan. And right around that same time, the Niners lost to the Ravens, remember, in the Super Bowl. Yeah. So I think it just completely twisted him up. But that means we're talking like a decade of this guy yeah, never watching a game. Yeah, I'm not getting into it. 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 I feel like I know um, who it but is. But that was not what was sent. Bolt is sent to something else because it is opening day around baseball. And we've seen like coaches and managers change their gear over the years. Like in the NBA, they got into the COVID bubble and they stopped wearing suits and right. then they just never went back. Right? It's yeah. a quarter zip and a sporty vibe. Baseball, they did not do that. Even with nobody in the park, 
the skip is out there wearing a tight tuck and a tight pair of pants. Yeah, that's the uniform. That's the uniform. They wear the uniform. That doesn't really happen anywhere, anywhere else. And I guess they're, they're having this debate over there, and I think it applies to what we usually talk about, asking which sport would be the most ridiculous for the coach or manager to be dressed like the players. Hockey... In but full yes. gear would be wild. Football. Football. Imagine Reed. a coach Put asking Andy a Reed. trainer for a towel and cleaning the visor. <laughs> okay, but I think the answer is basketball. Could you imagine Darko in a with with like no sleeves yeah, and, and a pair really of really like, tight shorts? <laughs> yeah, with, uh, spandex? with high so- Yeah, and spandex high socks. under the shorts. No, I've- no spandex. You got to expose the high short. And a high sock with yeah. just high tops. Ass cheek is hanging out the backside. Basically, like, not that like, high, short but just shorts, old though. school short shorts. Yeah, and with a clipboard and a, a headband. <laughs> That's what I I'm love saying. Because oh, they'll get down into a crouch, like and and have the whiteboard out and be start like yelling at the boys. I know. How can but, you take that guy seriously if he's got his own number? The coach has a number. But what if Andy and Reid is trying to? <laughs> can you imagine Andy Reid in a full uniform? Yeah. The thing is, I can't. We, we can, can because we Andy saw Reed. it when he was 14 years old or yeah. whatever, 12 years old, and he was 10 feet higher than everybody else yeah. in that kicking competition. Or yeah, whatever what was, was that? Kick, throw, catch or something like yeah. that. Some, some it's amateur It's still the program. most ridiculous thing ever. But Andy Reid, because you'd have to wear a bucket. Yeah. So him in a helmet alone. With cleats. But I think the hockey coach with skates on, like Sheldon behind a bench with skates yeah. on. Half eyes are <laughs> fogged up in timeouts. He has to clean the visor. Yeah, I kind of want to see that. That should, Instead of like a kid's game or during the kid's game, the next generation game, yeah. have Sheldon in full gear. It would be. See what he has and to he has to that. hold the tape. He has to tape his stick and have a stick with him the whole game. Yeah, like can't drive the stick. stick the whole time. You'd just yeah. be standing on your stick with gloves. And Half everything. of these guys would want to get on the ice, though, and play. I think you're right. Like, a lot of them are former players, yeah, right? I, think I don't right. know. I, I basketball is more visual. Like, you could see him running up wild. and down the court. Like, the idea of getting in the face of a, of a ref and yelling and screaming about a missed foul call. And you're in a muscle and you, And you have a uniform on. Yeah. Uh, I kind of, I do wonder like when baseball is going to get away from that. You know, it's their history. I appreciate their history. Yeah, I, ca- but that's I think kinda it kind of looks cool. It's not like they're always, like I think Kevin, Ca- it's Kevin Cash in Tampa, yeah. right? Yeah. He wears like a hoodie. Gibby wore like the little flak jacket thing. Like, yeah. They're not, they, they've gotten away from like full blown. Like Dusty Baker's got the toothpick, the batting gloves, and like the Gibby top. It's like yeah, they've gotten away from the. What full did Charlie gear. Bongos wear? Yeah, he, he Charlie wore the, wore the full get up. Yeah, oh yeah, he yeah, had he'd a tight wear the top, the, and the, the yeah. belt, and he yeah. had the Remember whole nine. Tommy Lasorda, Tommy guy, man, he used to, he'd get angry. Tommy would get. He going. reminded me of Lou Lamorello for some reason. Like yeah, same era, just gritty, old school, old kind of school, bigger than life type of guy. Yes, exactly. And Very he was well older done. too, and he yeah. was still out there wearing the uniform. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like they just, they'd never allow him to get away from that. And that's tradition and that's baseball. I always but. wonder if it's like AI or dubbed and stuff because they have Lasorda coming out and it's like mic'd and you can hear some of the language and oh, stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. I, oh, again, I think yeah. I've seen that. I think I've seen that. Because yeah. they had that with like Sparky Anderson back right. in the day. Like Sparky and Lasorda and them yeah. coming out. Lou Pinella. And, you know, yelling and swearing at each other. And yeah. even the umps giving it back to them and they're swearing. And mm-hmm. I often wonder if it's dubbed or if it's like no, I made up. I think that's up. real language. I think that's real, real deal. There's one of like Joe Torrey back in the day. Yeah. Same kind of thing where I don't know if he was mic'd or, or the bag was mic'd or something. And this guy is just lambasting the umpire. Just chewing on And the umpire is kind of like just sitting there saying, all right, you done? You done? Now get yeah. the hell out of here. Yeah. You know, it's like, all right, I, I've done my thing. Like you, you can tell managers when they want to get booted from the game. Yeah. Like Gibby's told us that countless times in the past where his team's getting blown out. He's had enough. He doesn't like the strike zone. He's like, screw it. I'm going up. I know I'm getting tossed. Right. The second I leave the dugout, I'm going to get tossed. But other times umpires are like, all right, you're just well, in a bad mood, and I'm not going to kick you out because I think it's better that you have to sit here and watch the game. Again, you know, yeah, I'm part of the worst that. moods of all time. Lou Pinella. Lou Pinella would oh, freak. Yeah. Oh, Lou Pinella my. and Robbie like he, Dibble. It was. It wasn't like 
I'm mad at the ump. He went out and ripped home plate off of home plate and would throw it and then kick dirt. He was that guy had an attitude. Yeah, man. he did. Yeah. yeah. He had that famous famous dust up with Rob Dibble. Remember we talked about that months ago in the clubhouse where Dibble put him in a headlock. <laughs> Started That's dragging right. him around the clubhouse. <laughs> and Lou Pinella had a huge head. Like he huge was a head. big dude. Yeah. Huge head. Huge head. But is Angel Hernandez, is he is he umping this? Head? I don't know. Is Angel still there? We have, I, we I don't know if he's retired or not. He, like, I can't remember. If I don't remember hearing him leave. Like, the last the he's... last big exit was uh, Joe West. Yeah. Nothing sets on sets Twitter on fire yeah. when that one comes out. Angel behind the plate tonight. Yeah. It's just like that's people, what I mean. It's opening everyone day. Everyone collectively. It's opening gets on. day. Did he get an assignment today? That that's up, what I, here, I need dude. to find out because I think yeah, he's, he's still, still he's still umping. He's somewhere. He's somewhere in baseball right now. He could be at the trap for all we know. Right now he could be just yeah. He man, could be that call still. It's most the most. It, there's been call. so many of them over the years. Angel yeah, Hernandez. No well, it? that was Jim Joyce. Oh, that, that was Joyce. Joyce yeah, that was Joyce with his handlebar mustache. <laughs> yeah, that was at first base. And he had a press conference the next day. Yeah, he started day. like crying the next day. He realized he stole it. He absolutely stole a perfect game. Uh, Shimmy. Luke's troops tweeting and said, Can you imagine Stan Van Gundy, no sleeves and a headband, <laughs> screaming at guys who are seven feet tall? <laughs> yeah, he's 5'2", dude, with a pro boiler, and he, he is hilarious to see behind the bench standing there. Yeah. Is that the guy who got dragged around? Who's the guy yeah, who got dragged around? that's his brother. Yeah, that's yeah. his brother. Jeff that's was, Jeff Van Gundy. Yeah, Jeff got dragged around. The, Imagine getting dragged before. around, though, and he's in, Knicks, he's in a Knicks uniform. <laughs> I, I promote this idea. I think, yeah. it would, I think it would be great for ratings. It would be. Uh, all right, Pierre Lebrun coming up. We will get to our heart list, all right? And we have an honorable mention in case we need it. I know who my guy is, and I cannot wait to reveal it. All right, opening day around baseball. We're tracking that. Leafs caps tonight. Pierre Lebrun still to come. Dear Hazy B still to come. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line of the final score. We'll get to our best bets later this afternoon. Leafs caps tonight. We're still tracking to see if Matthews will play. Pierre Lebrun still to come. Dear Hazy B still to come. Every day we uh, announce a current or former Maple Leaf player. And by the end of the week, usually there's five former or current Leafs. This week there will only be four. So this is the final Leaf of the week. And if you call in when you're supposed to call in and name all four, you're going to see Leafs Panthers April 1st. Plus, we're throwing in a $250 Vanilla Visa prepaid card. Vanilla Visa prepaid cards are available for purchase at Petro Canada. Today's player of the day is Craig Laughlin. There we go. Craig Laughlin. Fan of the show. Fan of the show. We had him on a couple hours ago, or last hour. It was great to catch up with Craig. So there you go. Phone lines are open. 416-870-1050. 416-870-1050. First one in with all four players' name. That's a big game, Leafs Panthers. That'd be a good one. Big, big game. Yeah. Leafs Caps tonight. Not quite patio weather. Sunny. Like it was a beautiful day today, but still a little bit too cold to be. You could sit out patio. there, but you need a, a light coat. First. Yeah, one. it's not jersey on the patio weather. Yeah. No, it's like a little sweater on the patio. Yeah. But if you sit under one of those lanterns. Oh, that's true. You right. heat it up. Lantern, patio yeah. lanterns. Technology and stuff. Kim Mitchell. I think I might have been the only Canadian ever in like my beer drinking. I hated patios. It just, I don't know. I never got involved. You're I, not a patio guy? Like me yesterday, hot dogs, and you, that is more offensive to me. No, it isn't. It's I like way more belly offensive. Up. I want to belly up at the bar. I no. want to set up shop. I got a TV. I got my sports and no one. It's just gross out there and people oh no way <laughs> that's man. that's ridiculous nowadays they've that's got ridiculous. what's worse patterns. that or hot dogs give me a oh, break hot you don't dogs like hot every dude. hot dog is a personal preference patios is like a lifestyle and an experience hot dogs are quick hitters hot dogs like i have 30 seconds grab me a dog <laughs> a do you patio. understand do you understand like getting drafted to the ohl and walking out of a bar creamed and saying to the guy please put chili on that as well it's the same feeling <laughs> Bacon bits. Ba- anything. A chili cheese dog? No. See, I'm not going. A I, I, chili I'm, cheese dog. A, where are you getting chili cheese dogs down there? Dude, have you I never remember. heard a hot dog where at the very end they just put a little bit of chili on it? Like, that uh, is... I've never had a chili. I know oh. bacon bites, I've but I'm not familiar with chili I've had cheese and bacon bits. We had what? A, this is amateur hour. We had a cab driver who was not happy because one of the guys in our car, we, we had our rookie dinner here in Toronto, 
because we played the Leafs a couple days later. And one of the guys had a hot dog with a hole in the bottom and the, the cheese and the bacon bits was sliding through and he didn't realize because he was well over-served. Yeah. We had, it didn't go well. Yeah, that's like, where you got to float the guy, here. throw him 50 bucks exactly. or something. And be like, sorry about that, we're out of here. It was bacon bits and cheese that was just yeah. dripping everywhere. Well, patios, being anti-patio to me, that's, that's, that's blasphemy. That, that is treason, basically, as a Canadian. I understand wanting it like a controlled weather system and atmosphere, but if you get the right vibe on a patio... Especially if it's like a rooftop patio Maybe looking at a live out band or a guy no, with a hot band. and comfortable. No, people are, oh, no way. <laughs> well, if it's hot, then they get the way, mist man. going. The yeah, mist. exactly. You get a mist going, you get a fan going. Yeah. But if you're out there at night, like if you're on a rooftop at like 1 a.m., even in the summer when it's cooled down a little bit, you can't get a better vibe than that. Yeah. The best vibe going. Yeah. You're vibeless. You have no vibe. You'd rather be in some grungy, stinky basement bar with a hot dog. <laughs> I'd rather be. That's you. I'll go to commercial like this. It's the ultimate mic drop. I'd rather be vibeless than gutless. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Final hour coming up. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app.